Welcome back to Lesson 10 in the Tin Man Project. In this lesson, we are going to move forward with creating the upper part of the arm, as well as modifying this lower part, this forearm piece. We can kind of see that it's, it's curving in the opposite direction than we need. And we previously parented all these other pieces to that arm, that forearm piece. So let's go ahead and unparent those just by grabbing everything inside of there and I'm just going to drag everything up here and unparent it. And that leaves the forearm separate now so we can customize that a little bit. Let's go ahead and just call that forearm and then we'll group everything together as the arm. So uh, we're going to have to put a lattice on here to reshape that. That's under the animation pull down menu. Create Deformers. There's our lattice right there. Close down the Outliner. Uh, subdivisions. Let's just take everything up to five, and then I'm going to right mouse click over the lattice cage to select the lattice points. And we're sort of kind of countering everything that we did before, so I'm selecting, kind of looking from the top down, dragging a marquee over this area and pulling it down a little bit. And Grabbing this top row and pulling it up a little bit. You can see how you can kind of reshape things. Probably pull this one down a little bit too. And this whole entire bottom row. Make sure that you're grabbing everything all the way down that entire row of points. It's kind of more the shape that we're going for. Maybe this can go up just a little bit more like that. And to get out of that, I'm going to right mouse click, go back to object mode, drag a marquee over both of them, and delete the history on it. And that gets rid of the lattice cage. So you can see we're kind of short a couple of rivets down here. And I think we can modify just the vertices on the bottom here. I'm dragging a marquee and sort of sliding all of those back up. And I think that's kind of correcting a little bit of an angle problem we had there. So go ahead and do that. And then we can just go ahead and kind of shape the overall group. Let's regroup that in the outliner now. So we've got the forearm. We've renamed that. Grab the rivets, the forearm, control G. forearm group. Okay, and I'm going to scale all of that a little bit. I think this forearm could be just a little bit larger. And you can see our pivot, since we grouped it, has gone back to the center, the origin. Let's send the pivot over that. And I'm just going to drag this down a little bit and scale it up overall. And you want to scale it uniformly if you've got the rivets selected, otherwise the rivets are going to become elongated and misshaped. So you don't want to do something like this and have oval shaping rivets. You want to make sure that you scale up from the center. All right, that feels a little bit better. Go back and just select this now, and I think you can stand to scale that up in X and just slide it down a little bit, and we'll have to reposition our rivet. So let's grab the rivet groups and just slide them down a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, so we've corrected that piece now. Let's move on with the shoulder. In this case, we're actually going to uh, use a subdivision primitive. In this case, we're going to grab a sphere. Let's drag it up here. And what's nice about subdivision surfaces is uh, all the sides are quadded off. We don't have to worry about doing that. If we hit free on the keyboard, it's got a nice round shape to it. I'm going to scale this down a little bit. If we go to our front view here, we can kind of line that up, get the right size, drag that into place. Okay, that looks about right. I'm going to come back out here and convert this over under Modify, Convert, 
subdivisioned polygon. Just the default setting should be fine. Convert that over. Can hit three on the keyboard and see it. So now we're looking at a polygon. Looks very much the same when it's in smooth mode. But we can now access all these pieces right here, the faces, all these components. I'm going to grab this group right here and extrude it, center it, and scale it in a little bit. Extrude again, center that in world space, push it back in. All right. And I want a little bit of a crease in there, so I'm just going to hit extrude one more time, center that in world space, and just actually scale it up so it has a nice little crease in there. That's sort of the ball and socket type of look. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a, a wave to our, to our sphere. To correct that, we can grab the vertices. Actually, the edges would be a little bit easier. We can double click on this edge. Hit R on the keyboard and just center that. The dragging the, the X into the center straightens it out. Do the same thing here with this one. See how it kind of straightened everything out. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the ones alone on the inside. I, I want to keep those curved. Let's go back to object mode. One on the keyboard. Let's drop in an edge loop here and select the faces. Q on the keyboard. Grab the faces all the way around. Extrude those out. So grabbing the Z, it's the blue one. Pulling those out and just scaling them a little bit. They're a little bit wide and kind of pushing them back. Okay. Hit Q on the keyboard and insert some edge loops to hold these edges together. So one there, another one here. We drop one in the center and scale this one up to round it out like we've done with our other pieces for the lips. Okay. And it's feeling just a little wide in here. I'm going to double click on this edge, kind of open that up a little bit. That lip was feeling just a little thick there, and then I'm going to push it back in, sort of rounding these edges out here, and then kind of pulling this one out to round out that edge as well. All right. Let's go back to object mode, hit 3 on the keyboard. It should look something like that. All right. So let's go ahead and create that recessed area back here. Let's grab these faces, four on the back. I'm going to go back to one on my keyboard so I can see what I'm doing. Extrude that. I'm going to push it in. And R on the keyboard. I'm actually going to scale it in a little bit too. This is feeling like a little bit too wide of an area for this recessed. I think what I'm going to do is just kind of pull it back out here. It's almost like creating an edge loop, so I'm just going to pull that back out, scale it in a little bit more, and now we're going to recess this area. We've just scaled it down a little bit in size by doing that. So extrude again, and then pushing that piece in. That looks a little better. Q to end that, and we'll insert some edge loops. Create our hard edges right here. So one there and one there. Q to end that. And we can come back out here, go back to object mode. And three on the keyboard. All right, so there's our shoulder piece. I'm going to come over here and grab this little pole. It's pole two. Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. W, and then I'm just going to move it straight back through here. It should all be centered and lining up. Looks like it is. Okay, and I think maybe scale it up a little bit. 
and then scale it a little bit in in uh, the y-axis. All right. And I'm just going to push it back a little bit. All right, so that's kind of our connection right there. And this is where we need to grab the vertices on this edge here and pull them up to create that little area. So I'm just dragging a marquee over that group. Do the same thing on this side so it's uniform. So just making sure I'm grabbing this group right here on that side and moving it up in Y. So you can see it kind of going up and over the shoulder area now. All right. Okay, the next thing we're going to make are the connections between the shoulder and the elbow piece. We'll start off by using a cylinder. Let's move that up here and over into position. And we'll rotate that 90 degrees. And the z-axis, just type in 90. And under inputs, let's go ahead and take the subdivision axis back down to 12, the height to 2, and the caps to 0. OK. And let's scale it down to size. So I scaled it uniformly using the center manipulator. And now I'm scaling it in the y-axis. Just move that over a little bit. Let's check it on this side. And I'm going to grab the faces on this side, just drawing a marquee around them and extruding. And we'll push it in in Z. So just creating a little indent right there. And then I'm going to drop in an edge loop about here. Cue to end that process. And then I'm going to grab the faces with a marquee. So that's all the way around here. Extrude that. And I'm going to grab the Z manipulator and pull that out a little bit. All right, let's insert a few more edge loops around here. So one on either side of these two edges. And same thing over here. We'll just drop one right here and another one right there. And here and here. OK. And I'm going to go ahead and drop in another edge loop down here. And we're going to scale this area down. Hit Q on the keyboard to end that process. Grab all of these. Actually, we'll just grab the face on the end and scale that down uniformly. So just bringing that to a point. And we can probably pull it out a little bit more. And inserting a couple more edge loops. So one right there, here, and on that side. And we really don't need the face here on the end. So instead of quadding that off, I'm actually just going to grab the face and I'm going to do that by dragging a marquee over the area and then holding the control key down, dragging another marquee to deselect that area. And you can see I've just got that end face right there, that cap, and hitting delete on the keyboard. And we'll do the same thing over here. Just grab it through here and hit delete. And we'll need an edge loop down here to hold that in place. So down here in the very end like that. Back to five on the keyboard. Probably grab this whole object and just move it down a little bit. And scale it up a little bit more. That. And we'll go ahead and duplicate it. So control D on the keyboard. Slide this one down and back a little bit. So this one sits behind the top one. And we'll scale it down uniformly first. And then in the y-axis to lengthen it out. And I'm going to offset these two areas right here just because they're um, intersecting right now. And I don't want to keep scaling this down and making it too thin. 
So I'm just going to grab the vertices with the marquee and slide that whole group down. So now it's offset from the other one. And we might need to scale it down just a little bit more and probably move it back. Okay. All right, so we have the connections now between the shoulder and the elbow. We still need to make some type of a connection between here as well as the hand, and we'll do that in the next lesson.